go. You have the words of eternal life. Alleluia, alleluia. The Holy Gospel according to St. Luke, the 21st chapter. Glory to you, O Lord. The words of Jesus. And there will be signs in the sun and moon and stars and upon the earth distress of nations in perplexity at the roaring of the sea and the waves, men fainting with fear and with foreboding of what is coming on the world. For the powers of the heavens will be shaken. And then they will see the Son of Man coming in a cloud with power and great glory. Now when these things begin to take place, look up and raise your heads because your redemption is drawing near. And he told them a parable. Look at the fig tree and all the trees. As soon as they come out in leaf, for you see yourself and know that summer is already near. So also when you see these things taking place, you will know that the kingdom of God is near. Truly I say to you, this generation will not pass away until all this has taken place. Heaven and earth will pass away, but my words will not pass away. But take heed to yourselves, lest your hearts be weighed down with dissipation and drunkenness and cares of this life, and that day come upon you suddenly like a snare. For it will come upon all who dwell on the whole face of the earth. But watch at all times, praying that you may have strength to escape all these things that will take place, and to stand before the Son of Man. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. You may be seated. Let's pray. Lord, we may not always realize it, but we are living in the last days. For you could come at any hour, at any moment, and this could indeed be the final day, the final hour. Help us to live in anticipation of that day, of that hour so that our lives are filled with you and that what we say and do is a reflection of your mercy and your grace and your love at work in the healing of the world. Now gather us around your word, help us to hear and in hearing help us to live. We ask and pray all these things in your name, amen. Friends, grace and peace to you today from God our Father through our risen Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, amen. I really enjoy a good movie, a movie that tells a good story, a movie that's worth spending the time watching, a movie that you don't leave the theater regretting that you spent the money and the time sitting in there watching something that was really not worth the film. There was one movie that came out not that long ago that I really, really enjoy. I've watched it several times since, and that movie is Arrival. You may not have heard of it. It was not big on the market, and it is a science fiction movie, which is not everybody's dish of beans, but it is an excellent movie. And it has in it no aliens seeking to take over the world, no invasion of some kind of alien disease turning everybody into some kind of monster. In fact, there is no blood or gore in the entire movie. There is only one death, and it takes place off scene, it's a movie that forces you to think, to think about several subjects. It forces you to think about communication and what language means. But the aliens come and they speak in a language that is totally different from anything we've experienced as human beings. And it's fascinating to watch the scientists and the linguists trying to figure out how to communicate and to communicate clearly and what happens when you don't understand a word or a phrase that someone uses and you substitute your own meaning for it instead of what they intended. It is also about an anticipation. And the main question that the movie leaves you with is if you know what's going to happen in the future and you know that something that's coming will give you great joy and meaning in your life, something you really long for and desire, and yet at a point in the future that very thing will break your heart, will you still do it? 
Will you still allow it into your lives? And that's a very challenging question. Something or someone you love comes into your life and you know because of what the future holds for that person, it will break your heart. Will you be willing to face the pain? Will you be willing to face the loss for the joy that it will bring you? It's a fascinating movie. I'll probably watch it again this afternoon because it's that good. It's not one you can watch once and walk away from and say, oh, that was good. You've got to really watch it several times and probably still it will struggle with it, but it's a beautiful movie in what it tries to communicate. I don't think the, the makers of the movie intended it to be an Advent movie, but it really very much is. It is about anticipation. It is about understanding what's happening in the present and anticipating what's coming, which is what the first Sunday of Advent is about. A remembrance of all of those who have anticipated what was coming, who heard the words of the prophets promising a great and wondrous future, a future that they may or may not see, but a future that was promised nonetheless. And when the promise is coming almost to fruition, there is also the promise that this will break your heart, as it would for Mary. For we celebrate the birth of Jesus, and we celebrate the birth of a child as a great joy. And Advent builds that anticipation. Our culture at this time of year is built around the expectation of the birth of Jesus, even if the culture doesn't recognize or acknowledge the birth of Jesus. It is celebrating a great moment. And it's supposed to be a moment of joy and happiness and, and blessing and everything you see and hear points us in that direction. And it's true. The birth of a child is a wondrous thing, a marvelous thing, a joyous thing. And it is anticipated with much joy and eagerness, but also, I'm certain, with anxiety and dread because you don't know what the life of that child is going to be. And so the promise of Jesus coming begins with the anticipation of the joy. The anticipation of what God had promised to humanity long ages before Jesus was born and would be fulfilled in Mary. It, it gives us that anticipation of the joy. And of course, this is where our culture would have us stop at the joy at the wonder of the moment. A lot of your Christmas movies, especially if you watch Hallmark movies, have that, that, that progression of an unhappy, unhappy person finding the new meaning of Christmas, finding joy, and the movie ends with everybody being happy. And that's where the anticipation of our culture would like us to stay. That the birth of Jesus is a place where we all are happy. But someone once pointed out that when Jesus was born, Mary laid him in a manger and covered him in swaddling cloths. And our Orthodox brothers and sisters sing in Advent, moving to Christmas, about the wood and the cloth. Yes, Jesus was laid in the manger, the wooden manger, and Mary wrapped him in swaddling cloths, which is what one does for an infant but it also promises that the wood will become not a place of rest, but a place of death. And the swaddling clothes that Jesus is wrapped in will become a shroud in which he is buried. The joy of his birth looks forward to the future that breaks the heart of Mary and should break our hearts as well. Because Christmas does not have purpose or meaning apart from the cross. The birth of Jesus, if it does not lead to a hill outside the walls of Jerusalem, would just be another birth of a child who would live his life and go on into the forgetfulness of time if it were not for the cross standing outside the walls. 
And so the birth that begins in joy also carries with it the pain and the suffering and the death on the cross. And would we submit ourselves to that if we knew? And yet we do know. We come to Advent and we light our candles and we sing our hymns in anticipation of a birth that will indeed bring us the joy and the hope of the promise of salvation, but will promise that salvation not by some mighty act of strength and power or the marching of armies, but rather by the death of that child 33 years later on a cross outside the walls. And the safety of a manger and the warmth of cloths wrapped him as he was born will end in the pain and suffering of wood on a cross and a burial shroud in a borrowed tomb. And God the Father knew this would take place. For he gave his only begotten son, knowing that the joy of his birth would not be complete until his dying on the cross and the joy of the resurrection to follow. And so Advent leads us through that time. While the world around us is celebrating and preparing and having its festivities in these days running up to Christmas, we within the body of Christ know in Advent we begin in repentance and sorrow and understanding of what sin has done. That it indeed brings the Son of God into the world in whose birth we rejoice. But it is also that child, that son, who will bear our sins on the cross and go down into death for us so that by his resurrection we might have the real joy, the joy of life eternal with the Father. It begins here. It begins here in the first Sunday of Advent in the anticipation of a birth to come and the joy and thanksgiving of that birth, but also in the recognition that that child to be born will be the child who suffers and dies for the whole world and will be raised on the third day so that all things might be redeemed. Advent has begun. Amen.